Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure the book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today we'll solve some problems that you will find on page number 123. Please turn to it. Page 123, the very first problem that we see there, number 72. In number 72, you're being asked how high is the archway two feet from center. And this is what it looks like. There is the archway. This is the center. We are two feet away from it. We are two feet away from it. This is two feet. We are also told that this, this radius right here, this is given to us, this radius is six. The question is how high is the archway at that point? We don't need this thing. What we are interested in finding out is this guy right here. As you can see, it's a very simple it's a very simple application of Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem tells us that the hypotenuse square has to equal this side is squared, let's call it h for the height, h squared plus this side which is 2 squared, therefore h squared would have to equal 36 minus 4 which is 32, 32, which means the h must be equal to square root of 32, which can be written as which can be written as 2 times 16 square root of 16 is 4, so it's 4 root 32, or 4 root 2. The answer is 4 root 2. Number 73. In number 73, in number 73 we are told that we have total of 300, 300 bushels of harvest and we are told that x trees each yielded 10 bushels. The question is what's the share of the yield from these x trees? We are looking for the share from, from, from x trees versus the total yield versus the total yield which we are told is 350. And this x trees we are told each yielded 10 bushels. If each of them yielded 10 bushels, we must have 10x. And that's all it is. Divide top and bottom by 10, we are done. The answer is x over 35. x over 35. That was 73. That wasn't so bad, was it? Number 74. Number 74. In number 74, we have a fraction and we are told that this fraction equals 80% or if you like, 8 over 10. We are told the denominator, denominator is 16 more than the numerator. And the question is, how much is the denominator? Pay attention to it. As to what is being asked, we are being asked to find the denominator and not the numerator. Do you understand? So let's begin. The fraction is 80% which is 8 tenth and 8 tenth has to equal the denominator is 16 more than numerator. So here's our numerator and denominator is 16 more than that. So it's numerator plus 16. Very good. Denominator is 16 more than numerator. So whatever the numerator is, you add 16 to it and you get that. Let's reduce it first before we go any more. 4 fifth. Cross multiply. So 4, 4 times n plus 16. That's to equal 5 times n. Subtract 4n from both sides. If you subtract 4n from both sides, we'll find that n will have to equal 4 times 16. Which is 64. But again, as I said before, this is numerator. We want denominator. 
therefore denominator is going to be simply 16 more than that. There you go. Because 64 is going to be one of the answer choices. You have to pay attention as to what is being asked, as I already told you, twice. That was number 75. Was it 75? I came up with the answer of 80, and 80 is not one of the answer choices. Well, that was 74. Number 74, and 80 is one of the answer choices, and so is 64. Number 75. I was looking at the answer choices of 75, and in number 75, we do have one answer as 64, but there was no 80. Number 75. Number 75, we are told that we're going to earn $2 per unit for the first 40 units. Then we're going to make 250 per unit for anything that we make 40 plus. We are told that we made at least 30 on each day. We are going to work 2 days. And for the 2 days we are paid $180. What's the maximum possible? For one day. In other words, what's the most that we can earn on one of these two days given the fact that we made at least 30 units on each of these two days, given the fact that we're getting two dollars per hour for the two dollars per unit for the first 40 units and then 250 after that and after anything above 40 that we make on a given day. Let's see. So here's our day one, here's our day two, and since we want, since we want one of them, we want to make as many as possible on, on one of these two days. Let's make one of these days to as, as little as possible, as minimum as possible, which is 30. Because we are told that we have to make at least 30 units. Since we have to make at least 30 units, let's make exactly 30 units. So on day number one, we're going to make 30 units for which we're going to get $2 per, per, per unit. We're going to make $60. Which means, since we earned $180 on the two days together, which means on day two, we must have earned $120. $120 on the first 40, on the first 40, we're going to make $2 per, uh, $2 per unit. $2 per unit. That's going to give us $80. Which means we must have made, we must have made $40 on anything that we made above 40. Question is how many more did we make above 40? Let's find out, shall we? So divide 40 by two and a half. So that's how many dollars we're making per unit. When you divide 40 by 2.5, I'm going to do that here. Two and a half divide, oh, we could have done it here. Okay. 40 divided by 2.5. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4, shall we? Because 2.5 times 4 is 10. So it's 10, on the top we get 160. There you go. There you go which means we must have made 16 units here. 16 units here, 40 units here, 40 units, first 40 units we get $2 an hour, the remaining 16 units we get to 50 an hour. Question was how many, what's the maximum number of units that we could, that we could have made in this scenario? The answer is 56. 40 plus 16. The most that we can make on one of these two days is 56. Number 76. In number 76 we are told, or rather we are being asked, we are not told, we are being asked to locate the greatest value among these five numbers. 10 times square root of 3, 9 times square root of 4, 8 times square root of 5, and 7 times the square root of 6 and 6 times the square root of 7. 
And the question is, which one of these is the largest one? You're done with all of this thing, we're going to erase it. Give me one second here, a break. There's another question. There's another question for you. One, two, three, four, and five. Can you tell me which one of which one of these five is the largest number? Well, don't tell me. Just keep it keep, keep it suspense. Well, whatever is the largest number, whatever happens with the largest number, if you were to go and square each one of these quantity, is that answer going to change? Of course not. Of course not. If you square each one of these, the largest one is still going to be remain largest. That's what we're going to do here. Instead of dealing with instead of dealing with these nasty numbers that are given to us to figure out the square root of five, the square root of six, and square root of seven, and three, and all of that, let's just square everything. Let's just square every single quantity. Because whichever one is the largest one will remain largest. Because we're not interested in how much it is. We don't really care what it is. We just want to know that it is the largest one. What the actual value is, we really don't care. So, ten, so when we square, it's just going to be 10 squared, which is 100, times 3. Square root 3 is going to be 3, which, is the, which was the whole point. This is going to be 81 times 4. This is going to be 64 times 5. This is going to be 49 times 6. This is going to be 36 times 7. Shall we? Let's start from here, this is the simplest one, that's just 300, let's see what we get here. 81, let me rewrite it so you can, you can follow my, my thought process. 81 times 4 is what we're trying to figure out. Okay, listen carefully. We know 80 times 4 is 320, we can stop the story right here, that's not the right answer. 80 times 4 is 320 and 1 times 4 is 4. So this guy is 424, anything less than 424 will be knocked out. Same thing here. 60 times 5 is going to be 300 and oh this is 20 what do you know oh I was so convinced that oh no that's 324 jeez I almost blew it that's 324 this is 320 60 times 5 is 300 and 4 times 5 is 20 that one gets knocked out 49 times 6 50 times 6, 50 times 6 is 300, so it's 300 minus 6, so that's no good, because 300 represents 56, we don't have 56, we have 49, 6, so we take, we have to take away 6, whatever, whatever it is, we're not interested, it is less than 320, 324, and this guy here, 30 times 7 is going to be 210, 6, 7 is a 42, there is no way this is going to add up to 300, let alone 320, the answer is this guy right here, which was B which is B. 324 is the answer. Answer choice B. There was 76. Let's go to 77, shall we? 77. In 77, we have two people, A and B. B, we are told, left at 8 o'clock, going east. A, we are told, left at 11 o'clock, going west. <coughs> A, we are told, is going 40 miles per hour. B, we are told, is going 20 miles per hour. At what time? At what time are they going to be 240 miles apart? At what time are they going to be 240 miles apart? The fact that this guy is going east and this guy is going west really doesn't matter to us. They can go either way they want. It's not going to change anything. So let's begin the story, shall we? Let's begin the story. Since the story starts from here. He goes, he leaves at 8 o'clock, so B leaves at 8 o'clock, going this way, this is our B. By 11 o'clock, this guy leaves at 11, by 11 o'clock, so this is 8 o'clock for B, this is for B. 
by 11 o'clock, since B is going at 20 miles an hour, he has already traveled 60 miles in three hours, in these three hours. And then at 11 o'clock, the other guy starts going this way. So his story starts at 11. So this is 60 miles in between, 60 miles already between the two because this guy started three hours before this guy did. And he's going 20 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour so in the three hours early that he's, earlier that he started, he's already 60 miles. The other guy, there's already a, a gap, a distance of 60 miles between the two. At 11 o'clock, this guy's story begins and he's going at 40 miles per hour. At 45, 40 miles per hour, he's going to go 40 times the number of hours, H, let's call it. And this guy is going 20 miles an hour, so he's going to go 20 times H, in H hours. That's all it is. All we have to do is add up 20H plus 60 plus 4H, that has to equal to 240. And we'll know how many hours will have to pass before they are, when they are at 240 miles, and then we give them the time. The question is, at what time are they going to be 240 miles an hour apart? We'll find out. So, 40H plus 60 plus 20 to 20H has to equal 240. This can't be too bad. Uh, let's just divide everything by 10. Divide the whole equation by 10. 4H plus 2H is going to be 6H. Subtract 2 from both sides, so this, uh, 6 from both sides, so this becomes 18. Divide both sides by 6, so it's 3. So it's 3 hours. 3 hours since they, start, since they started at 11 o'clock, 3 hours later, that's 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. It is at 2 p.m. that they're going to be 240 miles away from each other. 240 miles apart. That was number 77. Number 77. Let's look at 78. And number 78, number 78, we have a farmer who has X acres total. He has total of X acres, but he does not use the entire X acres for harvesting. He only uses, he only uses 90% of the land for planting. And he plants three crops. He plants three crops. He plants soybean, wheat, and corn. We are told that he uses 40% of the land, 40% of this amount that is. For soybean, he uses 50%. For wheat, and he uses, we are told, the remaining, 100, remaining 720 acres for corn. Let's begin, shall we? Since this is 40% and this is 50%, this 720 must represent 10% of the land that he is actually using, not the total land. If this is 10%, if you multiply both sides by 10, then the whole amount must be 7,200, which represents 90% of the total. 90% of the total. The question is, what is the total amount? Let's find out. 720, 7,200 7, is equal to 90% of the T. Therefore, T must be 7,200 times 10 over 9. Divide top and bottom by 9. The 9 nines are 81. If 9 nines are 81, then 8 nines are 72. Very good. It goes into 8 times 8, 0, 0, 0, 8,000. He must have total 8,000 acre, which makes perfect sense. Which makes perfect sense. He must have, we must have 8,000 acre. He has a total of 8,000 acre, out of which he left aside 10%. He did not use 10%. He used the remaining. He used the remaining 90%. He used the remaining 90% for harvesting, which we just found out to be 7,200. That was number 78. So the answer here is 8,000. Total amount of land that he has is 8,000 acres. Make sure you do not pick the 7,200. That is also one of the answer choices, obviously.
In 79, we are told that we start with 3. And then it doubles every month. Question is, what's the population at the end of 10 months? What's the population at the end of 10 months? If you start with three animals and they multiply, uh, and every every month their population doubles. Maybe maybe it's rabbits. You know, they breed like rabbits. Is the expression. And three becomes six, and six, and six become twelve, and so on and so forth. However, however, for our purposes, we're going to start the story as if we had only one one animal. But we'll worry about the three in a second. So if we start with one animal at the very beginning, one animal right there at the beginning, that one animal at the end of the first year becomes two animals. At the, at the end of the second year, those two animals become four animals. Oh, that's not what I meant to say. Those two animals become four animals. And then after that, 4 becomes 8, and 8 becomes 16, and so on and so forth. So, this is the beginning, end of the first year, end of the second year, end of the third year, end of the fourth year. By the end of the tenth year, we're looking at this quantity, 2 raised to 10. But that's only if you started with 1. We did not start with 1, we started with 3. Since we started with 3, at the end, instead of having 2 raised to 10, we're going to have 3 times 2 raised to 10. We are going to have three times the amount because we are starting out with three times as many animals. That's all. Number 80. Number 80. In 80 we are told that one third plus one quarter plus one fifth plus one sixth equals r times one ninth plus one twelfth plus one fifteenth plus one eighteenth. I hope that you're able to see right away that obviously we're not going to sit here and try to add up all, those, all of this fraction and all of those fractions with a common multiplier. Uh, at least, uh, least common multiplier that we're not going to do that obviously to sit here and find the LCM there is something else going on what is, go what is going on here is the fact that as you look at these numbers 9, 12, 15, 18 they're all multiples of 3 let's take out 3 common so it becomes R times 1 third and if you take out 1 third common the 1 9 becomes 1 over 3 1 12 becomes 1 over 4 one fifteen becomes one over five, and then one over six, which is exactly what we have on the other side. So we divide up it, we divide both sides of the equation by this quantity. It drops out, and here we're left with only one. Therefore, r is simply three. The three goes up there. R is just three. R is just three. That was eighty-one. That was number eighty-one. Let's look at 82. In 82, we are asked which is which is an integer. The first quantity is root 82 plus root 82 whole squared. And what they are hoping here, the people who write the exam, what they are hoping is that you will sit there, somebody will sit there and look at this as a plus b whole squared and try to open the whole thing. Don't do that, because they are the same quantity. That it's not a plus b. a plus b means they are two different quantities. This is the same quantity, which means it's just a plus a. It's just two times a. It is simply two times root 82 whole squared. Now when we square it, 2 becomes 4, it becomes 4, and square of square root of 82 is just 82. What that is, we don't really care. The point is 4 times 82 is an integer. The first quantity is an integer. What about second quantity? 
The second one says, second one says, 82, or rather root 82 times 82. So there you go. 82, 82 is an integer, but root of 82 is not a per, 82 is not a perfect square. 81 is, 82 is not. So this quantity times 82 is not going to be an integer. It, it does not equal an integer. It does not equal a whole number. The last one says root 82 times root 82 over 82. But there you go. Root 82 times 82. Root 82 times root 82 is just 82. It's just 1. So that one works. So the answer is 3 and 1. 1 and 3 is the answer. Number 83. Number 83. In number 83 we are told we are told that A can do half the job in 3 hours which means the whole job in 6 hours let's make a note of it shall we we are further told that B can do two-thirds of the job in nine hours. Now we understand I'm not writing everything but obviously it's understood that it's the exact same job, exact same work. The question is how long will they take to do this job if they were to work together? Well, before we worry about how long they will take working together, let's find out how long B takes to take to the job. You already know how long A takes. A takes six hours to do the job. How long does B take? B can do two-thirds of the job in nine hours, that implies that B must be able to do one-third of the job, one-third of the job in three hours. Three hours? No, that makes no sense. Do they say nine hours? Oh, it's six hours. That's why I got it. It's not nine hours, it is six hours. Because I knew it was a whole number. That, there was a whole number here that is. So let's begin again, shall we? We are told that B can do two-thirds of the job in six hours. If B can do two-thirds of the job in six hours, it must, it should be able to do one-third of the job in three hours. We don't want to do one-third of the job, we want to do the whole job. So if we multiply both by three, there you go. Three times one-third, it must be able to do one in nine hours. In other words, B does the whole job in nine hours, A does the whole job in six hours. Now, let's see what happens. That was the first thing. We have to establish how long they individually take to do the entire job. One takes six hours, the other one takes nine hours. Right? Let them work. How long should, should we work to let them work? Well, let them work nine hours. Let them work nine hours. Now that I think about it, 18 would have been nicer, but it's already too late, I already wrote it down. Let them work 9 hours. So in 9 hours, in 9 hours, A can do, how long can A do in 9 hours? Well, it takes 6 hours for him to do the job. In 9 hours, it will do one and a half job. One and a half job. Which is what I meant, if I, if I had used 18 here, this would have been 3. And B can do, in nine hours, we can do whole job, which means they can do two and a half jobs in nine hours. Two and a half jobs in nine hours. Two and a half jobs in nine hours. If they can do two and a half jobs in nine hours, that implies that they should be able to do one job in 9 divided by 2 and a half. There we go. Let's multiply top and bottom by 4. We used the trick just now a little while ago. So that at the end, at the bottom we end up with 10. 9 times 4 is 36 over 10, which means it will take them 3.6 hours. 3.6 hours. 
and that's all it is. Let's see how the answer choices are written down. 83. That's exactly how they are written down. I wanted to see if they had hours and seconds. 3.6 hours is how long it will take them to do the job or if you like 3 hours and 36 seconds. But that's not how they say it. Number 84. Number 84. I need a small tiny break again. Number 84 says that k times x plus 3y equals 6. It says which must lie on the line for all possible values of k. And the first one is 1 1. Let's see what we can do here. 1 1. Will this point lie, will this point lie on this line for all possible values of k? Let's find out, shall we? So k times x plus 3 times y, we are told has to equal 6. x is 1, so it's going to be 1 plus 3, y is 1, equals 6. k, k would have to be 3. In other words, this point, in other, in other words, this point will lie on that line for only one unique value of k, which is 3. It will not, this point will not lie on that line for all possible value of k. That is not true. Let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B says 0, 2. 0, 2. Let's just see what happens. 0, 2. x is 0, y is 2. When x is 0, what do you suppose is going to happen? There you go. k drops out because k plays no role because 0 times k is just 0. And what we'll end up here is, it should say 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. What we end up here is, what we end up here is a topology. Do you know what a topology is? A tautology is something that is true by definition, something that is true all the time, something that is an axiomatic, something that is axiomatic, it's an axiom. Of course 6 equals 6, whether or not 6 is going to equal 6 does not depend on what k is. It doesn't, it doesn't ask k, what are you, what is your value k, can I be six? Can I be equal to myself? Of course 6 is going to equal 6 at all times for all possible value of k. Therefore, this, this point lies on this line for all possible value of k because k plays no role here because x drops out it, because x, make, x makes it disappear. I'm looking for, just give me one second since I brought up the word I want to end the video so it's already been too long but since I since I gave you the word you're going to wonder tautology just give me one second oh there we go, day number 38 I'm going to put this word on the top here somewhere T-A-U Tautology Day number 38 If you're interested in improving your vocabulary If you're interested in improving your vocabulary Do the search Just type in GMAT vocabulary words Day number 38 The video will pop up Watch that video, you will learn the word tautology and you will learn the word axiomatic and you will learn some other words that will help you improve your vocabulary. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to stop right here. If you, wish to get, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like me to help you prepare for the exam, send me an email. Go to my website at kishwaniprep.com. Send me an email or fill out a form. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. I will talk some more. Alright? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.